Hello everybody, my name is Chris and this is my channel, Barnon11970, and uh, today I'd like to discuss something that I feel is very important, and I really think and hope that people will listen to this and watch this with somebody of the younger generation, because unfortunately it seems like this younger generation is being used with tragedies like the shooting in Florida to continue an agenda, and Basically, without researching history, you're doomed to repeat it. And if you know anything about the rising of Hitler, the way we've been taught, now whether it's true or not, I wasn't there, I can't verify. But if you notice throughout history, dictators have always used, and Hitler was one of them, that used children to create the need for protection. We must save the youth. And there's an old saying that says, if you don't research history, you're doomed to repeat it. And we're seeing this happening again today. Now, the first thing I want to say is any shooting, whether it's a thousand people or one person that even just gets injured, it's too much. Now, I understand the frustrations because nobody wants to know that their children or their loved ones or friends or anyone can walk down the street, go to a school enter a movie theater, you know, driving in their car, just sitting in their home, and have something like this happen, these tragedies. So I think we can all agree, whether if you're left, right, somewhere in the middle, that shootings from evil people are bad, and we need to find a way to stop it. Now, with that being said, we should not just rush to a conclusion without thinking about the consequences of an action. Because if we fail to do that, there's an old saying that says, be careful what you wish for, you may get it. And in these times where people are being programmed to be scared, being programmed to think a certain way, to be pushed towards a certain agenda, and being used through tragedies, whether they are created or they are natural events, we need to all think in the best way if we want to get a solution that benefits us all. Because in today's society, we're being separated in lots of different ways. It's called divide and conquer. So, I mean, look at the division between the Democrats and Republicans. Look at the, the, the division of the sexes, the male and female, and now any other you know genders that you want to include in that. Look at the separation of races, the separation of countries. There's so many different ways we're being separated instead of being unified. Because remember, just this country's slogan alone, the United States of America Corporation, there's a very famous line that says, United we stand and divided we fall. And yet look at all the division that's going on. And again, I, what I'd like to call inner stand, why people are reacting but there's a pr thing called problem reaction solution where a problem is created it creates a stir which causes a reaction and most of the time the very people that caused the problem are the ones asked to create the solution and people are controlled with fear with doubt with these kind of tragedies and the youth is being misguided because if you see some of these rallies, if you see some of the posts on your social networks, there are people that are flat out, especially in this younger generations, wanting to literally ban guns. Now, many people say, oh, they're just AR-15s and assault rifles. Well, I'd love somebody to point out what an assault rifle really is. We've been programmed that assault rifle word, that that's what people regurgitate. And, you know, tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. But, again, I understand why people want these things, because no one wants to see a tragedy, whether it's a staged event or one that happened. Politicians will always take advantage of a situation to follow and progress their agendas. Now, I want people to think logically about what this generation wants. Because there are people, I've seen many videos where they're interviewing these youths at these marches, and they're saying they want guns banned altogether. Now, 
I think we can all agree, no matter where you stand, that it would be a great world if nobody owned guns, if there were no weapons of mass destruction. But that's not the reality we live in, so we have to live in the reality that we live in. Unfortunately, we're not a utopia. We cannot have certain people be able to have the ability to destroy and not have another section be able to defend themselves from people that turn corrupt. And this is not paranoia. This is not conspiracies. All you have to do is look throughout history of tyrannical people or tyrannical governments that had the one thing, which is power, that needed to be always kept and grown and expanded. And they would step on even their own people to get what they wanted for their own personal power. And they always use the youth. I mean, just look at, you know, what we've been taught about Hitler. How they, how he surrounded himself with children, saying we need to protect the children. Which, of course, any parent or any person, of course you want to protect children. I think we want to protect everyone. But it goes without saying, I don't think there's many people on the planet that would say, oh, well, you know... F the children. No. I mean, you'd have to be a criminal or one of the people that has a problem to think that way. So I think we're all in agreement that, yeah, we want to keep everybody safe. And, of course, we want to keep children safe. But we also have to, like I say, understand what is going on here. Now, if we ban guns... Now, I'm not a hunter. I don't own 5,000 guns. I don't believe in going around and shooting people. But I know plenty of people that own guns that don't go around shooting people. And we need to focus on the problem. Because if we want to preserve life, we need to preserve all life. And that means the elderly, that means the young, and that even means the unborn. We have to make sure all life is precious, not just the select few. And also understand that we are all human beings. You know, we're Democrats and Republicans and Independents and Christians and Catholics and Buddhists and black and white, gay, straight. You can go on and on and on. But when it all boils down to what we truly are, we're all living humans. We all have that in common. And we need to get back to that unity. Because there are certain people throughout history... And they tend to be in governments, if you notice. I mean, the average person, your next-door neighbor, hasn't started a war with another country. Your family has never started a fight with somebody in, an, in another state to the point where they want to murder each other. Nobody, I think you know, owns a nuclear device. At least I hope not. And if they have... How many times have they used it? My point is, it's governments that ultimately end up creating things like genocide and slavery and poverty because they control the money. They control the information. They control everything in your life, what you can put in your food, what you get out of your quote-unquote education, what can and cannot be said on the television. And they utilize our fear and our anger and our frustration. And the problem is, we're losing our identity. And instead of realizing, because I've said so many times on my videos, you need real eyes to realize that if we don't stand up for ourselves and we don't speak up, if we give our power to someone else, they'll gladly take it. But you better hope the power that you're giving to somebody is somebody worth giving it to. And if you look at any government... Throughout history, all around the world, I mean, let's just talk about governments today, wherever you live, whatever country you live in, can anyone name any government where they completely have their trust and faith in them, that they do everything right, they do it for the benefits of all, where everybody lives in peace and harmony? There is not one place on the planet that offers that, and yet we always lean towards these criminals, and a lot of them are criminals, they just don't get punished for their crimes. And we wonder why things aren't going the way they're supposed to. So let's talk about today's youth and with this situation, the most recent situation with the shooting in Florida. Now I understand nobody ever wants to be shot. No one should take the life of somebody else. No one has the right to do that, and they should be punished. But we need to focus on the problem. 
because as much as people want to blame a tool a tool only works if it's used by a person and their agenda is what matters because if you know anything about the shooting there's a lot of situations that are questionable about the cops that were there at the scene that didn't bother to go in and they basically cowered behind their cars for whatever reasons they didn't go in the fact that the FBI knew about this kid and he was reported dozens upon dozens of times to the police and they never did anything the fact that he was posting things on a social network about abusing animals and threatening to kill people I mean, how many warning signs do you need so to blame the tool I can understand where most people say well if you get rid of the guns then you get rid of the problem well that sounds nice in a perfect world but let's put it in true perspective last time I checked drugs are illegal can we all agree that majority of drugs I mean like certain states now and certain places around the world that you can have things like marijuana but let's just say for overall like things like heroin and cocaine and things like that they're illegal right how many people do you know have had access to drugs how many people do you know that you could call right now even marijuana in a state where it's supposed to be illegal how many people do you know can get access to that illegal substance so even though it's illegal you can still get access to it so do criminals obey laws well if they did there'd be no crime there would be no jails there would be no need for prisons because everybody would supposedly follow the law now if you know anything about drugs and if you know anything about prisons they can't even stop drugs in prisons so the point I'm trying to make is when you make a law that restricts things let's say for example like guns and again in a perfect world we should all have no guns and I'm talking governments as well not just people we should have no guns on the planet no weapons that can destroy other people but that's not the world we live in but if you pass a law let's say that bans guns altogether now that's some of the youth are crying out for that and let's say they get that well if you think there's a lot of shootings now what do you think will happen the day when criminals realize that no citizen and I use that word loosely if you have a Black's Law Dictionary look up the word citizen under the legal definition and you'll never want to be called one again but if criminals knew that the regular people the common people and I hate using that word but that's what a lot of people call us had their guns taken away and their right to protect themselves taken away let's just say the ban happens well criminals now can go around not worrying about ever being shot and you think shooting sprees are bad now wait until they realize that no one's coming to shoot them back because if you know anything about the police police are rarely there when the situations are occurring I mean I've had my house robbed I'm sure you know of somebody who's had something robbed maybe you've had something robbed yourself when was the last time the cops stopped it in the middle of it happening or stopped it before it happened what do they do they're there to file reports after the fact so they don't really do much to prevent crime when it comes to a crime that's already happening and that's why you see with all these shootings no matter where they are the reason that they continue as long as they do because it takes time for the police to get there and like for example with the school shooting in Florida there were cops already on the scene and they failed to do their job so criminals do not respond to the laws now I understand again with the emotions people want to have some kind of solution but don't you want the right solution instead of a solution because when you create laws that restrict the freedoms of our ways and our rights to protect ourselves you increase the opportunity for someone down the line to become so tyrannical or possibly tyrannical that they could take advantage of that situation down the line and it's something we don't see right now and many people don't realize that those things have happened which means they can happen now there's no guarantee 
But do you want to live in a world where you're slowly being restricted? Because at every moment there's another law that will restrict what you can say, where you can go, what you can do. And you cannot do it all at once because people will react. So people will say, oh, well, they don't want a full ban. And they're not going to give a full ban right away. But they're going to take a little bit here. And then another event will happen. Then they'll take another piece here. And by the next time you realize, decades have gone by and it's completely gone. And you didn't realize it. It's like somebody having a bank account with, let's say, $100 million in their bank account. Well, if they went to check their bank account the, the next day and all of it's gone, well, they're going to go find it. They're going to do something about it because they're going to notice that all their money is gone. But if a criminal was to take $1,000 here, a couple of hundred dollars here, every now and then, a few weeks, it may take them years, but they could rob that person blind and the person wouldn't even know it. So that's how these situations, this is how our freedoms get taken away from us. They don't get taken overnight. They get taken slowly, little piece at a time. You know, if you tried to murder somebody by stabbing them, they're going to resist. But if you were to, while well, they're sleeping, take a little piece of them, a tiny little piece that maybe felt like a pinch, it may take decades, but you could slowly destroy that person without them even realizing where it's coming from and what's going on. So, again, we want solutions, but we want solutions that benefit. And the idea is to not concentrate on the tool. It's to concentrate on things like the prescription medicines, the way that we are being so divided that we all don't trust each other. We don't speak to each other anymore. There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of anger. We need to focus on the problem. I mean, these marches are great if you want to have a good cause, but when was the last time the youth marched for all the drunk drivers? Because somebody posted, and I don't know if it's true or not, but they said since that shooting, there were about 118 teenage deaths due to alcohol, drinking, and driving. Where's the rallies for those people? What about the rallies for all the children that are murdered with abortions? You know, because they could say if you find one speck of of dust that has some kind of cell in it in outer space, they call it alive. They call it, you know, we found life on another planet. So let's say they visited Mars and they found one little microbe. They would say there's life on Mars, but yet... The same people that tell you we need to take the guns away will say it's okay to murder a, a, in a child that hasn't developed yet in the womb, saying it's not a living thing. But you see the irony here. So it can't be some life is precious. It needs to be all life is precious. Because if you take the word abortion or any other word they use, it's still the murder and the extinction of what was to be a life. Even if you don't consider it a life at that moment, because your fe the feelings don't matter. Because what if that life was you, or your parents, or somebody who could have changed the world? We cannot justify one extinction of life over another. And that's where people sometimes, we get lulled into a false sense of security, lulled to sleep by certain terminology. Because, oh yeah, we're going to just abort something. You're extinguishing a life, or what would have been a life. Either way, if left alone, that little cell, that little single cell that keeps dividing and dividing and creates a living being will most of the time become life. So we cannot extinguish anything. But where are the marches for those? The youth is unfortunately being taken advantage of. And youth, I'm sorry to say, does not have experience. That doesn't mean they don't have hopes and dreams and they don't have thoughts and they don't have abilities and they, they can research things, of course. But you have limited experience at that point. We all need to step up and change things because, like I've said in other videos, destiny only works if you choose to do nothing and allow the destiny to happen. Anything and everything can change unless we decide not to. 
So if we continue down this path, eventually your right to protect yourself will disappear. One little piece at a time. And by the time you realize it, you better hope the who's ever in charge at that point decides to do the right thing. But if you want to take that chance, we can continue to go in this direction and do nothing. No, I'm not saying to start shooting people. That's the wrong way to go. I'm not saying to injure or hurt other people that two wrongs don't make a right. You can make change without having to hurt a soul by doing it united, by focusing on the real problems, because nobody's protesting any of the pharmaceutical companies and the drugs that they're giving all of our youth. No one is talking about all the hormones they put in the products that you eat and consume every day, all the chemicals that are in your water, in your food, and in the air. They just want to focus on the one tool that could be used to protect you against them if they decide to do evil things. And again, all you have to do is research history. Some of the biggest amounts of murders have happened from a, a country's own government. So do you want to take the chance? Because again, criminals do not obey laws. That's why they're criminals. That's why they're in jail when they get caught doing something they're not supposed to do. So as much as people would say that any law to protect them with a gun law, whatever it is, even if it's not a ban, you might think, oh, well, this is going to do good. No, it's not. Because you have to think in the eyes of a, of a criminal. And I've used this example before, but think about this logically. Get rid of the emotion. Get rid of the anger. Just think logically. If you were a criminal and you had the choice to go to two houses to rob, you only had time to go to one of them. And on one side you see a sign that says trespassers will be shot on sight and you see another sign on the other house that says proud ownership of a gun-free zone which house are you going to rob are you going to take the chance with the one with the gun owner knowing that you could potentially be shot and killed or at least injured because not not for nothing I'm sure being shot is not a pleasurable fun experience but if you go to the other house that's a proud gun-free zone, well, you're not going to have to worry about being shot. So which are you going to take? You're going to take the one that's easier. And that's why if you see some of the most regulated cities when it comes to gun laws, the most restrictive gun laws in the country, they tend to have the highest crimes. Because criminals love people that cannot defend themselves so we need to not rush to judgment people are pushed and guided through emotion and that's not the best way to handle a bad situation it's the calm cool collective ones that get out of a situation I mean prime example if you are in a burning building the last thing you want to do is run around like a crazy person all scared that you're gonna die and just open any door hoping to get out because you could open the door that fills the room with smoke and you die or you open up the wrong room and fall into what was a burning area where the ground was not stable and you fall through to your death it's the ones that panic the ones that react and use fear as their guide that go in the wrong direction because anybody knows if you are in a burning building and you come to a door the first thing you do is make sure you put the back of your hand against the door to feel if it's warm you don't use the palm of your hand you use the back of your hand and if it feels warm you shouldn't open that door or if you see smoke coming through the door you take a towel or something and stuff it underneath to keep the the smoke from coming up and you lay down on the ground and you crawl because the smoke goes upward the idea is to think, to process, to use the God-given gift of a brain because those that react tend to be the ones that put themselves in jeopardy. And unfortunately, people that are in control of situations 
utilize this and know that the average person does not think, does not process, just uses emotion. And that's why there's so much hatred and so much division in this world right now, because people are not thinking. They're saying, well, I have a certain leftist or right or whatever point of view, so no matter what, I am going to stick to that side no matter what they do or say. That is the wrong thing to do because the people you hurt are yourself and the ones that you love. Because whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, what have you, aren't we all being taxed? Aren't we all subject to the same laws? Aren't we all going to benefit together or suffer together? People need to think differently. And today's youth, I implore you to don't to not use your emotions. I mean, they're good when you want to fall in love. They're good when you need to trust your instincts about certain things and follow your passion. But using your lower vibrational energies of fear and anger and frustration without process and thought and evaluating the situation and seeing what the consequences of your actions are down the road, most younger people don't see that because they haven't lived enough life to experience that. You cannot have wisdom without experience, and you cannot have experience without time and the process to create that. And by the time the youth becomes older and realizes the mistake of their ways, it's too late. So the idea is to change it before it happens, because people will tell you, oh, it's etched in stone. Well, it's only etched in stone. It will only stay there as long as people don't do anything to get rid of it. And that's what I try and teach people about fate and destiny and prophecy and all that stuff. It only works if you choose to accept it. And that's why I've always said, if you take a piece of paper and crumble it in your hand, if you let go of it, the destiny of that paper is to fall down to the ground. Well, if you stop it midair, you stopped what was supposed to be destiny because you interfered with what was supposed to be. So it's never too late to change. It's never too late to th go in a different direction or to stop the inevitable, the quote-unquote inevitable. Because if you do nothing, you will get what you deserve. So do we really want to go down a path that could potentially lead us to a point where we will be unprotected, where criminals will be able to run free without danger of being injured themselves? Because the law is protecting criminals now. You see with all these sanctuary cities and how they're alerting people. You know, there's nothing wrong with people from other countries wanting to come live in this country, but why can't they do it the right way? Why can't they go through the process? Because I guarantee you, if anybody in this country, any, let's say because the liberals are ones that tend to want to protect these sanctuary cities, what do you think, anybody that has a liberal point of view, what do you think would happen if you illegally went into North Korea or illegally went into Russia or illegally went to North Korea or illegally went to Nicaragua or Iran? What do you think would happen to you? You think they'd all welcome you in with open arms, give you a bank account, give you a credit card and a job, or do you think you'd end up in jail or at the very least thrown out of the country? So... When it comes to even things like immigration, there's a difference between criminals that are coming in to take advantage of a situation and people doing the due process of getting citizenship the right way. So what is wrong with having people, you know, made sure that they weren't criminals coming across to export or import drugs into our country? or to increase the gang scene, or at the very least take away the jobs that you and I complain that we can't find. Well, if somebody that comes in from another country who's willing to take, you know, half pay and do double the work, who do you think they're going to give the job to? So again, we need to think in a different way. There's always right ways and wrong ways, but there's also doing no way. But there's always consequences for your actions. So hopefully you'll think different. So if somebody asked me if I was a Democrat or a Republican or anything, I'll tell you something. Years ago, I was a Democrat. I was a leftist. I loved Obama when he first became president. I used to watch MSNBC all the time. You know, I really thought the way they were tro programming us to think until I started doing my own research, until I started thinking for myself instead of being told how to think. 
And today's youth is falling into that same trap. They're being told what to think, and the reason that you could see it is because when you ask them a question, they just regurgitate the same thing that thousands of people have said over and over again. If you don't think for yourself, you're easily controlled, even if you don't believe you are. It's time to think differently. So I want to thank you all for listening to this. If you listen to this to the end, I really appreciate it. I hope you will listen to this with somebody that may disagree with you. The idea is to no longer fight and name call and and post things that get other people agitated. The idea is if we stay divided, we will eventually be conquered. If we unify, we increase or decrease those chances from ever happening. So it ultimately falls into our own responsibility. The problem is in this world we're taught to sit back and wait for Superman instead of realizing that we're all Superman. So, what do you think would happen if Superman was sitting on the couch feeling depressed or feeling scared or thinking that I'm just one man, I can't do anything? You think he would get anything done? So, change your mindset, change your way of thinking, understand that all people are humans first. All those other things are just different points of view. Everybody's allowed to have their own point of view. But remember, if your life is focused on dictating the life of other people and what they can and cannot do, then your priorities are in the wrong place. We want to stop criminals. We want to stop evil. We don't want to just stop people because somebody said something that you may disagree with. Otherwise, one day, something you say will no longer be allowed to be said. Something you do will no longer be allowed to be done. And by the time that person or those people cry and complain about it, there will be nobody to hear those cries. And we don't ever want to get to that point. So it's never too late. Like a famous baseball player, Yogi Berra, once said, it ain't over till it's over. And the last time I checked, it ain't over. So let's keep it from being that way. So thanks for listening, everybody. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day. Be safe. Think for yourself. Get a little gold and silver. Take your money out of the banks and get a credit union account. Think for yourself. And don't be afraid to question anything, even if it's just for simple verification. Thanks again and have a great night.